Hey, before I get started, a lot of you had comments in that last video about these dusk masks and where to get them. I just buy these on Amazon. This is a N99 mask. It's it's far better than an N95 mask. They seem to be readily available and not that difficult to find, so I'll just include a link down in the description or just search Amazon for N99 masks and you should come across these. And then get a couple extra packages of those filters while you're at it. So I hope that helps to answer your question. I was getting a lot of those questions on that last video. Real questions, not like those made up YouTube questions. You know how, Here's one thing that YouTubers do. When we wanna talk about, a th we wanna talk about something that we wanna talk about, we'll, we'll phrase it in the form of a question like, I've been getting a lot of questions from viewers lately about my technique for turning a screw. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. I've been getting a lot of questions about why these doors are out here in my shop. <laughs> Those of you who are watching my series last week on making the closet organizer might re and if you weren't watching that last week, why weren't you? You were missing out. That was some, if I remember right, that was some of the best content that's ever been published on YouTube. These doors up here have been a problem for years and the reason why is these are just made out of plywood and that plywood is kind of delaminating there. It's splitting apart because they don't fit in here right. It's always a horrible fit. It's got these kind of little pressure fits that go into this little bitty knob under here. And so it's supposed to snap in there and it never works right. And so I've replaced these hinges in the past and I tried getting new hinges here. I was just testing them. These are just the, you know, snap closed regular leaf hinges so we can just do away with these things and have it snap back. The problem is all of these screws, now the holes that all the screws were in are too big. They're all, it's just stripped. So I'd either have to fill those up. I could fill those with some little dowels and sand them off and re-drill those holes. I could get new brass screws for all of these hinges, although that's a lot of hinges and brass screws. Or, or I could do what I probably should do and just remake these doors. That was kind of a long way to go to get to that, wasn't it? I'm gonna make some new doors. Okay, Antonio, I'm really excited to show you kind of a preliminary design for the shoeshine box. I'll send you over some diagrams with the actual dimensions of everything so that you can check and make sure that those are the right sizes for you and all of the stuff that you have. I mean, it's really one of the best things about making stuff yourself is that you can customize it to exactly what you want. What I've decided to do on this box is to use a piano hinge on the back. I think that'll be the easiest one for us to install and they're pretty inexpensive and I think they look pretty nice. So let me show you what the box looks like when it's opened up. I put this divider in here to just add a little bit more organization. So you should be able to put some cans in this spot. So this would just lift straight out of there and it just sits down on these two cleats. One of the concerns with the piano hinge is that the box will open or the lid will open all the way like this. And that may be a problem. It may make it unbalanced if this is open all the way and then the box could just tip over. One of the things we could do is put a chain on here that will hold it at that 90 degree angle. And then I also wanted to include another option for this tray is we could eliminate that divider all together and then just put a couple of cleats near the top where the tray would just sit on here i've done a cutaway where you can see what the actual size for the inside so what you need to do is measure a couple of the cans that you have that you want to fit in here upright and see if they'll fit in about i would go like eight and a half inches or so make sure that it just to make sure it's kind of comfortable fit here's the continuous hinge or the piano hinge this is kind of your basic one and you can get these in brass or stainless steel you know different colors and then i wanted to show you here's one of those chains that uh, we could use to hold the lid up and again that comes in different colors and i had real good luck finding this cabinet handle here it looks like this would work out perfectly 
and the sizes, the dimensions look about right. The problem with a lot of this hardware that you buy on Amazon is that they come in, like in this case, this is a 10 pack. Of course, these are designed for, you know, if you wanted to outfit a kitchen, you'd want a whole bunch at once. So it's kind of hard to buy just a pair or even just a single one, but you might be able to look around locally at a hardware store or home center and see what they have. Here's the latches. These are kind of your basic cabinet or box latches and I think those would work out fine. What I want from you next is to just look over this design real carefully, especially the measurements and make any adjustments that you see fit and let me know your overall thoughts on the box and if this is something that you think is gonna work out for you. Lastly, we're gonna make this box using rabbit joints and there might be a dado in there to hold the divider in place. I'm gonna guess you haven't made these kind of joints before, so this will be a really good experience for you. I'll show you how to make this project using just your regular table saw blade, but a stack of dado blades would make it a lot easier. But before you rush out and buy a stack of dado blades, you need to check your table saw and make sure that dado blades will work with it. Here's what I'm gonna need to see from you. First of all, this insert plate on my saw is kind of non-standard. See how thin it is? So what I need to know is what is the thickness this way of your insert plate that comes with your saw. Most saws set down a little further and it makes it real easy to make your own insert plates. So I couldn't buy any dado insert plates for this saw so I made my own a long time ago and it was really kind of tricky to make it. I had to use some little support strips under here just to get it to fit for my saw. So that's what we'll need to do. And also we need to check your arbor here, this, that it's long enough to support dado blades. Also, I hope you still have your owner's manual that came with the table saw because they should have a section in there about dado blades and whether your saw is compatible with them or not. Mostly I just wanna finalize this design. Once we get the design finalized, then we can come up with a cut list, see how much wood we need and go shopping for lumber. You wanna hear something really stupid? Of course you do. Nobody ever says, no, I don't wanna hear what was stupid. Okay, so I was laying out on a, just a sheet of plywood just to figure out the best way to cut these doors and I laid out eight of them. I have no idea why I did that. There are four doors above this closet. I actually laid this out and illustrated and figured out, well, I'll need about, you know, three quarters of a sheet of plywood. I think I was thinking that since I need eight hinges, I need eight doors, because that's logic. Okay, here's my four doors all cut out. I'm making these a little bit longer than the existing ones. So the next thing I need to do is cut out this rabbit that goes all the way along three of the edges. And that's so that the hinge can sit down in there like that. But I think I'll save that for tomorrow. I need to decide whether I wanna cut that out on my table saw or use my router. I think I'll use the router. That way I can also create this round over on three of the sides. It's funny because I can tell this was originally made on a router because see if you can see this, this little bloop right here where it looks like the router slipped somehow. And it also looks like they've done some sort of a almost like a Bondo job there to try to square up that edge. I always find it interesting to see how things were constructed years and years ago. And this was probably made in 1955. And my guess is it was just made right here on site as they were building the house. But no matter what room I'm in and I need to work on something, I'm always noticing shortcuts that were taken in construction. But what's really interesting is looking at old, like antique furniture and the way it was constructed is that I think that since they were all made with hand tools, they had a, a wider range of tolerance there on what was acceptable. If you look at the tops, they're not always plain down perfectly flat. They're not always square. There's a lot of variation in that stuff that I know a lot of us today with our modern power tools probably wouldn't put up with. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Let me know what you guys think about the shoe shine box design. Do you think it shines or not? Oh, and for those of you keeping track of the Cobra and Bubbles situation, I'm working on a couple of new tricks for them. One of them is with Cobra, he's, he's ringing a bell now. Next thing I wanna do is I, I'm gonna try to train them to walk on a balance beam. Oh, and by the way, their names Cobra and Bubbles, yes, it is from 
Lilo and Stitch. The character in there was named Cobra Bubbles, and we thought that those two names were perfect for these two cats, and now, as they're getting older, those two names just fit their personalities perfectly. Ving Rhymes played Cobra Bubbles in Lilo and Stitch. Very similar to Marcellus in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Not really. I'll see you guys later.